Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Sklav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. We have gone across the sea from Oahu to Maui, and we are in Maui, and the title of our program today is Maui no Kaoi, and I can tell you that's the truth. And we are in the office of the mayor, Mayor Alan Arakawa, and his chief of staff, uh, Lynn Araki Regan. They're both here with me today, and we're going to find out what's been going on in Maui. Uh, the mayor has just finished his third term uh, as mayor, and he'll be going on, leaving office, looking for other uh, adventures, I'm sure. I'm going to ask him a little bit about that. Uh, Lynn has been chief of staff, and she'll be coming to the end of her program here at the office of the mayor. And we'll find out what has happened while she was here and where we're going. Where is she going? Mayor, first, thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. All right. Uh, I know you uh, have a potential council meeting that you're going to have to go to, and so I want to ask you a few questions, and if you have to leave, then uh, I, I guess you'll, you'll, ha you'll have to get up and leave. Um, first of all, you're leaving the mayor's office. Yes. And what, what, are, you, what are you looking forward to? What are, where are you going? What do, what do you think the future holds? Well, there are always options, and I'll always be busy. Uh, I have a, a farm that I'm working on and a botanical garden that we're working on. Um, I want to go traveling. I want to go to the beach. I want to have a life. <laughs> the reality is that um, my job is 24 hours, mayor, seven days as a mayor, week yeah. as mayor. We're working on over 100 projects at any given time, and any major emergency that may come up, we have to be able to respond to. When you're mayor, everybody expects you to come up with the answers. There's no uh, pawning off responsibility on anybody else. You know, if you're a governor, they don't expect you to be able to fix the potholes. If you're president of the United States, they don't even te they expect you to know where your community is. As mayor, they expect you to know everybody within the community and how are you going to solve every challenge that comes up. So. I've been doing this for a long, 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 long time now, and I've been on 24-hour call pretty much most of my life. And it's going to be good to be able to sit back a little while and just have somebody else do it. I, I noticed that you're running for council, mayor of, uh, I mean, for the council of Maui. Yes, and the responsibilities don't stop. And uh, a lot of the projects that we're working on, as I mentioned, I'm working on well over 100 projects at any given time. I'm looking to try and produce continuity for the next administration and to be able to be a good reference uh, if they need it. Now, there are literally thousands of meetings that I attend that nobody else attends because there are so many different topics. So we have people that are interested in the roads, they're at the road meeting, but they're not interested in the others. Okay, well, let me ask you, as you leave office, yes. what faces, what are the biggest issues facing Maui County? And Maui County is more than one island, right? I mean, you've got you know, Maui four Maui, islands. Maui County is Maui, Molokai, Lanai, and Kaolawe, four islands. Uh, Kaolawe is uh, not inhabited, but Maui, Molokai, and Lanai are. The biggest challenge that we have is that we have a changing demographics, and that we have a very, very quickly expanding community. Um, our population, when I was younger, was about 30,000. Today, we have over 200,000 people on the island wow. at a given time. Almost all of our infrastructure needs to be planned out decades in advance because it takes time to be able to build it. Our harbor, for instance, uh, is almost at capacity. We need to be able to be creating another harbor. Mm -hmm. It takes the Corps of Engineers roughly 30 years to get a project like that uh, to completion from the time it's on the drawing board. So I've been working with them for a number of years to try and put it on the drawing board. The funding for most of the, the projects that we have are being adjusted as the federal government adjusts and the state adjusts. So we have to adjust with the government's uh, other entities. When we start dealing with our economy, 
we're going to have to be able to look at how are we going to develop our economy when we no longer have a good agricultural base. Right. If sugar, uh, sugar was our major agricultural stability, and we've lost Pioneer Mill, we've lost Wailuku Sugar, we've lost uh, HCNS. But we need to be able to replace them with other entities to create. What, what's going to be there? I mean, because I drove up to Kula the other day, and there's, I mean, the acreage. Our it's tourist industry has been growing immensely, has been filling the gaps that the sugar industry is leaving. Um, so as far as employment, we're at the lowest unemployment rate that we've had. We're a little over 2%. Um, when we're looking at our economy, we're a double A plus. So we're a very, very strong economy. We're a community our size, which is, you know, when we're looking at about 160 population, and we've got about 200 with tourists, we do almost an $800 million a year budget. Mm -hmm. So we compare with the biggest and the best as far as uh, per capita budget. And as far as the state, it's very, that compares very well. We, we're, we're at the top of almost every category you can look at. We've been one of the top tourist destinations in the world. Uh, our name recognition is better than New York City and better than uh, Florida. Uh, we're right up top as far as the, the popularity. So we have a lot to defend. Our social service programs, um, we spend over $30 million a year to supplement what the state and what the federal government does for our social service programs. Make sure that as the baby boomers are going through, we'll be able to provide housing for them. When we're looking at things like sea level rise, we purchased about 80% of the north and south shores or found ways to be able to put them into no build so that we don't have to worry about houses falling into the ocean or new projects falling into the ocean. You have to plan 50, 100 years, 500 years in advance for many of the things that take um, the long-term planning, as well as with our roads. We went from patching roads and just putting asphalt on the roads to literally taking the road down to the core, replacing the core of our roads, literally creating brand new roads that will last 25 plus years so that we don't have to repair them every year. And as we go through and we change what we were doing, we make it much, much easier to be able to maintain and to be able to have good product. So as you uh, welcome the next mayor uh, yes. into office, you, you're gonna, what, what advice are you going to tell give him? I'm going to really advise him to try and okay. find <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. I, I, uh, That'll be a hand. <laughs> I'm, I'm really going to advise him to, to be able to really look at getting really talented people into the director and deputy director positions. But to really understand that the real work in the department happened with the personnel that are there lifetime, mm -hmm. the civil service workers that are there really running all of the programs. They know what's happening within the departments because after administration after administration leaves, these are the guys that are there working on all the projects, doing all the planning, having to do the day-to-day -day maintenance. The steady hand. The steady, uh, steady and controlling hand. And that's kind department. of where you got your start, too, isn't it? In that's that, where I got my start. I started as a janitor in the county, and I worked my way up to supervisor, council, and mayor. So I really done pretty good. Then. <laughs> you know, you work hard, you put in all the time and the effort that's necessary, you can accomplish almost anything. And almost anybody can do it if they're willing to put in the time and energy to do it. Hard work. The problem is that many people aren't willing to do that. So it's a lot harder. It's not just about getting a college degree. It's about applying the knowledge that you have in a common sense way to make it work. Is there anything that you wish you had more time to do? I mean, are, are, are there lots of things that you wish you had more time to do as mayor? I wish that I had more time to work on almost every project that I have to work on to be able to help this community for as long as I can to be able to make it better. However, wishes are for dreamers. And the reality is that we all have to do what we have to do. If I were to leave this office in December, there are many, many other things that can be done. I have a farm I'm trying to develop. 
I'm trying to do a botanical garden. I'd love to be able to go out and play bridge and to be able to go to the beach once in a while. I heard you're a champion bridge player. Just uh, mm -hmm. I'm a life master plus. Okay. So I can I can do fairly well on my own. But again, there are every day every day that we're alive, there are opportunities to be able to do things that we can appreciate. If you can see the beauty no matter where you go, and you can see the opportunities no matter what you do, life is never boring. Mm -hmm. And when one door closes, many more open up. And you have to be able to pick and choose where you want to go. I see nothing but roses and beautiful things in my future because we're going to make it that way. I see. And that's really where we have to go as a community. We have to see where we want to go, and we have to make it happen. Life doesn't happen by accident, and good things don't happen by accident. It really takes working diligently day in, day out, to be able to set the goals and to accomplish the goals that you want to reach. Great advice, Mayor. I appreciate that. I want to ask a couple things of, of your chief of staff here. By all uh, means, uh, she's a good example Lynn, of what you can do. Yeah, and Lynn, I've known you as a lawyer yeah. uh, for many years, but you're not, not a lawyer. What is this job you have here? Well, I still have my law practice. Okay. Um, I am there in the evenings, some weekends. Um, but I love this opportunity to serve the community through the um, through being the mayor's chief of staff. It's, it's been a really great experience. I've served in this capacity for a little bit less than a year. And um, prior to that, I served as the county's uh, budget director for about a year. Just because the previous budget director had left, um, Mayor was kind of in a bind because the budget session, was, the budget season was gonna start in a few months and he needed someone who was committed to helping the committee through serving as a budget director. So I stepped up to the plate and volunteered. Well, I mean, you, you took a job that you knew was going to end. Yeah. Uh, and and I mean, what what was the motivation there? What I mean, you, you knew it wasn't going to last. Yeah, and that was part of the reason why I decided to take this opportunity was because it was a short term. Um, opportunity to serve the community and apply whatever knowledge that I've gained through my legal profession along with my other um, experiences that I've gained over the years to serve the community, and I love it. I absolutely love the varied issues that come before the county, and I love sitting and talking with Mayor about policy and, and long-term goals and, and achieving short-term goals. Okay, well, let, let me ask I love you. It. Tell me about some of the short-term goals. I mean, what, what things have you seen with your experience with the mayor here? And I, don't want, I, I'm, I don't want him to say anything because I, I don't want him to be talking about his achievements. I want to hear it from you. Right, so um, just as an example, when I came on board, um, a couple months after coming on board, um, Mayor sat me down and said, you know what, you're going to be in charge of Tropicare, which will start in two months or so. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Tropicare, Tropicare is um, a military uh, response training where 350 military personnel came to Maui, and they're still here, to provide no-cost health care for nine street days in six different locations. Hmm. So things like that, things may come up, you know, that, that Mayor needs assistance on, and as Chief of Staff, I either assign or take charge. And what, what other accomplishments like of the Mayor can we talk about? You know, just, uh, it would take hours for us to discuss <laughs> accomplishments, but... Let me interrupt just a couple sorry. seconds, just to point out something. Yeah. The Mayor's office in any community is the highest level of government where you work on a one-to-one -one basis to solve individuals' problems within the community as well as group problems. So the, project, the, the things that come to our office can be anything from, hey, can you help me find a job? Uh, I've got a pothole, can you help somebody fix the pothole? Mm -hmm. I've got a broken water pipe. So we, we work on many, many thousands of requests from the community yeah. to do the simple things mm. because we control the departments that can do them. Right, and I think I saw that when I yeah. came to your office. There, there were folks outside 
want, you know, had a question or had some need. And so you kind of, I mean, you're dealing with people every day. Right. Citizens every day. Every day. Businesses, nonprofits, individuals, homeless. I mean, it's it's a wide variety of people we serve. It, it's kind of a, really, a, really an open door policy that I see here. And the satisfaction level is the highest you can attain because you get to work with people on a one-to-one -one and you get to solve their problems on a one-to-one. -one. That's what makes it all worthwhile. Or they may not even be county problems. They're, it could be maybe an immigration issue. It could mm -hmm. be a state issue. And we work with the very partners in our community, state, governor's office, what have you, to make, to address these issues for them. So you're actually doing something. Uh, you're not passing it off. You're looking for ways to solve the problems. That's a, the, the mayor's office is the highest elected position where the public expects solutions that you can't pass it off to anybody else. It's the one office in government where people they, they really expect you to give them some solution to their problem. And your success or failure is going to be whether or not you can come up with the solutions. You can't pass it on to anybody else. You've got to do it. Lynn, you know, uh, you're coming to the end of this particular phase of your professional career. What's next? What, what are you thinking? Uh, I love this job. I mean, <laughs> if this could be a job that I could do for the rest of my life, I'd do it in a heartbeat because of the varied issues that I get to um, address and help the community with. Um, you know, my next career, I would love to pursue whatever passions that I have, which are many. You know, whether it be cultural passions, um, nonprofit sector, um, serving you know, in local government, state government, I am very passionate about these things. And um, I would love to have a job where it's not a job. It's something that I could it's a joy. be passionate about and, and not think that it's work. Okay. And, Mayor, uh, you know, um, we talked a little bit about uh, the um, – sugar cane fields, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted just to go back to that for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the plan for those fields? I mean, is, is there something out there that is is going to... The plan is over. evolving. We're, we're trying to keep it in agriculture. A lot of it will depend on who wants to farm, what do they want to farm. I see. And as people step up to the plate to actually do the work, then the whole picture will, will complete itself. Now, again, one of, the, one of the beauties of our job is it's a constantly evolving puzzle. So every day there's a new advancement, something else, a new solution someplace else, and we have to be able to wrap all those different things that are happening into the final solution. It's, it's one of the best challenges you can get. Hmm. I just wish we had more time to be able to finish up so many projects that are in the works right now. You know, like the service center, Mayor, yes. you know, that we've been dealing with for a few ish, for a few years now. It's finally we're going to have a groundbreaking breaking before we uh, leave office, and I would love the opportunity to see it complete. Well, we'll see it complete. Somebody yes. else will complete it, but we'll see it complete. Yes. A lot of the direction that we're setting will, by force, have to occur. So we'll, we'll be able to do that from whatever position we're at, and we can assist by being uh, there to be able to give advice and to help out if questions are asked. One thing, uh, you know, I, uh, you, you mentioned cultural, and I, there was a group of young students from Japan, or yeah. I guess uh, in here, mm -hmm. and what was that all about? And I know you've done more things like that, too, because I helped uh, yeah. uh, one, one of your, yeah. your, your Thank things. Thank you so much, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a, over a dozen sister cities, various sister cities from all over the world, 
Um, and those students who were here uh, this morning were from Miyakojima, which is our only sister city in Okinawa. Mm. They're staying here for about a week, and we're enjoying having them visit us. And what, what, what did you do with the, the, some of those kids that were, were affected by the tsunami? Uh, Thank you for your back. support, by the way, Mark. I really appreciate it. You know, we brought in about 100 um, people, both adults as well as youth, um, after the earthquake, the devastating earthquake in 2011, we brought them to Hawaii to provide them a home, um, some time, a rest of time, and they had a wonderful opportunity to really just kind of relax and forget, at least for a couple weeks, um, the disasters that, you know, Japan faced. And you know what I liked about that? That was... You know, that was your office doing something really good, yeah. mm -hmm. something really positive for people. And it, and it didn't have to be Americans. or it, it, was, it was somebody that we in Hawaii have a close relationship yeah. with, and that's Japan. Mm -hmm. and, and I really, to me, that really uh, was good. And I have to acknowledge both of you because you each played well, a, a big role. In not, not me, but the mayor, I'm sure. Well, it's a community, a community very giving. And the community is worth fighting for, and the community is something that we can always count on. But you know, there are many, many other instances where we work with other foreign governments as well as federal and state. A good example is the uh, we've been working with Japan, NIDO and Achi, on a Jump Smart program and an electric vehicle program. So the electric vehicles. We're trying to go to 100% alternative electric vehicles. We also were working with smart grid, trying to develop the technology. As island communities, we don't have any petroleum. We don't, right. we don't have oil that we can mine. So anything that we can develop using the energy that we have naturally, like our sun, like our wind, our ocean, we can then save that money that we would be buying and build our economy. And Worldwide, all those countries that don't have petroleum base can use the same technology, and it's being shared. So you see many communities now picking up on some of the stuff that we started and incorporating it within their, wow. their communities. Wow. Internationally, you could make a difference like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, thank you for uh, telling me, uh, thanking me. I appreciate oh, that. No. I, I, I'm grateful. Thank you. Um, one question here. I've been coming to Maui for many years. When I first started coming, it was probably before you were born. But anyway, it was <laughs> before Lynn was born. Maybe before Lynn was born. But anyway, uh, no homeless at that time. Things have changed. Do we? What? How? How is Maui dealing with the homeless? How? How? How is that? Is that something? Maui has always had people that have had problems. Yeah. We have a huge network of social service agencies that were able to absorb most of the challenges within our community. Of late, we've been overwhelmed by a lot of people moving into the community from outside, as well as the removal of a lot of the medical facilities that were helping those that have mental challenges, mm -hmm. chemical dependency. So we're now trying to get the state and federal government to reinstate a lot of those programs that they canceled because of the cost of medical insurance or what have you. That's why we have homeless on the street right now. I see. We can provide houses, but you can't provide the treatment that's necessary for those people that have drug addictions, that have alcohol addictions, that have mental challenges, unless you have the, the continuum of care long term. The homeless that you're seeing on the street right now, for the most part, are the ones that cannot be put into housing because they're not capable of being in housing. And of course, newcomers coming in right. fill those gaps as fast as we put people in housing. So. That's our challenge right now. Or they refuse or they housing. Or they refuse to go to housing. And, and you know, Maui, Maui no kaoi. Yes. Right? I mean, this, if I wanted to live on the street, uh, this is the place you would choose. I mean, it's a beautiful place. The beaches, everything is nice. Yeah, you know, it's a convincing argument. Someone from New York or the, the East Coast, when it's freezing winter, you go to someone home and say, here's a plane ticket. Go to Maui. They've got sunshine. 
360 days a year. Right. And food is served. Yeah. Great. And people are nice. Uh, yeah, culturally, nice. The, uh, the island of Maui, I, I think that goes back also to, yeah. They actually give them a, a list of what to do when you come to Maui. Hmm. Go directly to the social service agency. This is what your post office box needs to be. They come in, they apply for all the benefits. We have the challenges in trying to be able to support those that. Okay, we have a, a few minutes left. Uh, I know you're both born and raised in Maui. Is there something about that that has shaped your lives or that has given you the, the feelings that you have about, about service and... Well, I mean, being born and raised here on Maui, I love here. I love Maui. I love this home, this community, and it's been such a wonderful um, experience being a lifelong resident of this beautiful island. The people, the aloha, everything, um, the services that I've been, that my family and I have been blessed to receive. So I think that's part of what's driving me to serve in whatever capacity, whether it be at the county or through nonprofits. I just want to give back, and I want to share that feeling of the importance of giving back to my, my child, which, which slowly but surely we are. So that's what drives me. For me, we started off as a very small community when I was born, when I was very young, a little over 30,000 people. Yeah. So you got to know people as your friends, your family, your neighbors. Everybody worked together. Everybody knew everybody. And as I've been growing up in this community, that neighborhood has expanded and the people we know have expanded. But ultimately, we work with literally hundreds of people within this community. We depend on each other. We work with each other's uh, particular specific skills. We're, we're a family. This community is really one big family. And there's nothing that is more pleasurable or more gratifying than to be able to help people, people that you know, people that you want to get to know, and everything that you can do to help out, you, know, you, you can feel good about it. And at the end of the day, when I'm in the hospital and I'm ready to pass on, the, the, the major accomplishment in our life is, are we satisfied with what we were able to do to help others? And when you do that on a day-to-day -day basis, I know that I'm gonna be able to, to answer that question and say, yeah, I fixed the road my brother was complaining about. Yeah, we fixed the pothole that my neighbor was complaining about. Yeah, we fixed the ball fields where the teams that we play, you know, we fixed the fences and the grass is better. So we've made the quality of life for everybody that we could much better. And, and that's, that, that's all you can accomplish. That, that spirit of family yeah. is a Maui thing that you feel you grew up with that has in, in, imbued your your time here in office. And I, I think it's a very rural type. You, know, you, you see it all over the United States and other countries where you have smaller communities that coalesce because you have to. But here on Maui, you know, it's the Maui magic. Thank you both very much, Maui, no kaoi. I appreciate your time, Mayor. Lynn, Thank good you. to see you again, and Thank look you. forward to seeing you some other time uh, okay. in, in law practice or wherever. But uh, Thank, you. Thank you both very much. Aloha. Thank you very much, Mark. Aloha.